Welcome to Mind Pump. This is the top fitness and health podcast in the world. In this episode, You're we answer health and fitness questions asked by our audience, but we open up the episode with our introductory conversation where we talk about our lives, we tell stories, we mention our sponsors, we bring up scientific studies. Here's what went on in today's episode. We start out by talking about old school porn. That's right. We all <laughs> Somehow we make it back to that. We grew up during the age of no internet porn and we had to get very creative. Uh, with, uh, the good old days. Yeah. So we tell some stories there. Then we talk about cooking in a cast iron skillet. Believe it or not, when you cook in a cast iron skillet, you actually add iron to your diet. So it's actually an interesting way to raise your iron levels. But I talk about how I cooked butcher box steak in there. Now, Butcher Box is a company that delivers grass-fed meats to your door, heritage pork, minimally processed bacon, uh, wild salmon, very, very healthy meats. They deliver it to your door, eliminate the middleman so you get a great price. On top of that, we have a huge discount and hookup for you. So this is the Mind Pump discount. Check this out. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get two free filet mignons, and one pack of bacon. Those are both for free. And that's not all. You get $20 off your first box when you sign up. Make sure to use the code MINDPUMP at checkout to get all those hookups. Then we talked about the limits on hitting the, the ball with your head in soccer in the UK. They're now starting to put limits on under 18 players. We talk about the coronavirus and what's going on over in China which leads me to, to talk about Justin Bieber and Lyme disease, because you know what goes with, good with the coronavirus? Lyme disease. Come on, man. Then we talked about Wayfair and how they- You cut. planned that like for a, a it, while. It just came up, yeah. dude. It's like uh, magic. I don't know about that. Then we talked about the Wayfair, the company, how they're cutting uh, their staff. Uh, I talked about the weight loss drug, Belvic, and how it's being removed from the market because it causes cancer. Uh-oh. We talked about Nike ex do it the old way. extortion. There's a documentary on that. Adam totally forgot the documentary name, but ten minutes later, popped it up. <laughs> popped up. I talked. He didn't about, drink his pure today. I talked about the latest Gallup poll that shows Trump econ Trump's economic approval are through the roof. Then we talk about Bernie Sanders and how he wants to destroy the country. Then we got into wow. the fitness questions. The first question was uh, this person did like us. <laughs> this person says, "Hey, look, I saw an ad on TV for the Jenny Craig DNA meal plan." For weight loss, what's the deal? Is it good? Is it baloney? We give our opinion. The next question, this person says, can you build a good core by only doing compound lifts like squats and deadlifts? So we talk about training the core. Good, and, not great. And whether or not you need to work it directly. Uh, the next question, this person says, look, if the last gym on earth is on fire, what piece of equipment do you save? So we talk about our favorite pieces mm, of equipment. Let's hope it was a Planet Fitness. And the final question, uh, this person says, look, I have the right mindset, but I keep getting distracted. Give me some advice, please. By the way, in that part of the episode, we mentioned something called Brain FM. This is something you can subscribe to on your phone. It plays in your headphones and actually changes your brain wave patterns. Uh, you can become more focused, meditate. Mm. It can even help you go to sleep. It'll no hypnotize you into a genius. No, no joke. This stuff is uh, it's legit. Anyway, we have a discount there too. Go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. Get a full twenty percent off for life. Also, uh, before the episode starts, all month long, Maps Split is fifty percent off. Now, Maps Split is a six day a week bodybuilder, bikini competitor, physique competitor type program. So, if you're very serious about your fitness. If you want to develop an amazing physique and you have some experience working out already, this is a great program. Here's how you get the 50% off discount. Go to mapssplit.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-P-L-I-T.com and use the code SPLIT50. That's S-P-L-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. Sometimes I sit here <laughs> right before we podcast and I look at you guys and I think, handsome. Yeah, like handsome. You know, that's it. Just it's one word. Just that word just pops up. This is up. episode one, two, three, four, by the way. Oh. Is it? Hey. Is it really? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So Justin can go up to twelve. How you about you, that? Adam? That's it. How that's far all, can yeah, you go? That's as much as I got. Thirteen. Yeah. Because I have two extra. Only because he can get to twelve. Because <laughs> he's got throwing on. <laughs> yeah. You gotta win again. Yeah, you got thirteen. Yeah, <laughs> Always gotta win. Damn it. 
Me and Adam, it's like an age-old battle. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? What do you always say, Adam? Your biggest uh, strength is your biggest weakness? Yeah, your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of these days, you're going to, you know, like in movies, Um, when when you you encounter a demon, and he's like, in order to escape, like he gives you like some kind of riddle. Yeah. It's like, you must lose. Ah! I don't lose. Yeah. Yeah. You must willingly Your lose. soul is mine for eternity. Yeah. That's what would happen, I, dude. I don't know, man. It's how you win a lot uh, with us. I don't know what, what that is. Huh? You don't. You care the least about it, but yet, uh, you, that's I, why. It's hu- uh, humble is the word that <laughs> I use. <laughs> I, can, I don't think it, you know that word. Can you put, I was going to say, can you put humble in your name in the same yeah, sentence? Exactly. I don't know. You, you totally, yeah. you totally, I'm, so, I'm the humblest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the humblest. <laughs> the most humble. Bling. I, I, you know, someone asked me, I don't even remember what the question was, but somebody asked me on my Q&A the other day, and I was like, well, the, the humble answer would be no, but the truth is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, truth yes, is I yes. knew I was going to do that. <laughs> a, yeah. Have you ever been, have you ever been told you're cocky? Be honest. Yeah, no, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. course. yeah. I mean, that's, that's You're all question. today? You mean today? Yeah, or? like what time? Yeah, yeah like <laughs> what time many? were you? Well, yeah. there, you know what, though? Uh, in the defense of- uh, Yourself. Any, yeah, and myself <laughs> and anybody else that's been labeled as cocky before, <laughs> mm. people, insecure people are intimidated by confident people. Yeah, they need, a, they need a word it's, for that. It's their fault. Yeah, it is their it's fault. Their fault. <laughs> they see can I did, deal see with I did that. that. <laughs> I've been called I'm not cocky, you're insecure. I've been called cocky, but it's not because I'm confident. Bing. I would. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Sorry. I, I would say my. Boo cocky. Um, Whoa. Oh, wow. wow. You just had to go oh. one more step further right there. That's not yeah. a good category of, of video. Just wound up it. <laughs> don't, don't look at that. Yeah. That's a group effort. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Anyway. What are you drinking there, Adam? Is that just water? Just water. You got to hydrate. Man. I'm still hydrating from last Are you? Night. Yeah. I'm. Yeah, you know what too. I'm doing right now? Mm. I'm sweating weird. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Um, so my hands are sweaty. It's probably your hippie deodorants making it. And uh, come on, you don't wear deodorant. Uh, <gasps> hands are sweaty, and uh, my knees are sweaty. Palms are sweaty. Nobody. Mom's I have, spaghetti. I have no idea why. Sweaty yeah. knees. Sweat. I know, right? That's does like it, an old make, man thing. Doesn't make. Is it really? The sweaty yeah. kneecaps. That's why I'm going to start is that wearing a stress thing. That's why I'm start wearing shorts like this. Did yeah. I ever tell you guys when I used to go work with my dad? He, because uh, you know, you you guys think I don't care. Hmm. You haven't met my dad, right? <laughs> it's where you get it from. Oh well, you mean he's oh he's a he was a poor Sicilian. I don't even think he knows he's supposed to care. I would go to work with him, and he would wear you know work pants. And my mm-hmm. dad, because of the way he grew up, he ain't gonna buy nothing new until the old stuff is destroyed and disintegrated. There's like no reason. These <clears throat> yeah. are my work pants, right? So he'd wear work pants until they were just shredded, and then he he would have my my mom cut them to shorts. But they were hella short. They're like right here. So, so he would wear I'm serious shorts. That's embarrassing. And and then he would continue to wear them so that the bottom were frayed. Listen, if the if the <laughs> if the pockets Did are you wear longer like than the boots? shorts, yeah. if the pockets are longer you can pull than it the off shorts, you can't do that unless you're a chick. Well, and the worst yeah. that the, is like that is a that's a rule. Dude, me and my cousin was we would you know we were like 14, 15, and you know my dad's cool, so you could tease him. Yeah. And we'd make fun of him for his little short shorts, and he'd yeah. be like, that's. Yeah, he's like Papa, that's girls wear shorts. Like, can't wear that. <laughs> and he goes, Oh yeah, you think so, huh? And then he would have he would wrestle us and kick our ass. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, then yeah, you yeah. can't you can't make fun of a guy wearing short shorts who beats you up. Do you think? No. We're, do you think Chuck gonna, Norris pulled it off? Do you think we're like, gonna come full circle with uh, stuff like that? Like, um, I hope not. But no, I mean not not so much the short shorts, but the not caring like about. Uh, materialistic what? things. Oh, because because we we you know I feel like I'm we, starting to see that lately. Right, right. We, everywhere I go, and we predict that that's with your peers because they're all of, old, bunch of ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could be that too. People, it could, it could be that because <laughs> bunch of old friends. You because we're yeah. now in our forties that we hang out with other people in their forties and they just don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> they gave up ten years ago, so that maybe that's why. You know what? No, I just mean because because things are becoming more readily available and. In our lifetime, I think we do, I, I think we all agree that uh, clothes and sneakers and anything that can be printed by a three D printer. Uh, oh, do you mean everybody just can be able to wear whatever they want? Yeah, and uh, so then it loses its status. Yeah, yeah, you're like, right. Like, and the, the something agree. else will, and I'm sure something will replace it. Right, that I I can't predict or figure out because I still think that we will have we still will find a way to create a hierarchy amongst us. Like uh-huh. right now, that's. Clothes and cars and things are a way that people create well, this, cars, this artificial status. Cars don't even matter that much with kids like they used no, to. No, they don't already. No. In high yeah. school, nobody cares. No, you know when I was when I was that a kid, cars were you know, that I 
had all kinds of car magazines I subscribed to. Like yes. that was a thing. Like yes. you, mm-hmm. like I remember just thumbing through car magazines and like, oh man, I would love to have. Like you really, ca- no kid gives a shit about. Ca- when was that time you see a kid looking at a car magazine? You guys remember Maxim? Yeah, they don't. Yeah. Whatever happened to Maxim? They still exist. They have a, they have a website, right? Doug, pull up Maxim.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they, they like just Jenny McCarthy still on there. They they pivoted <sighs> online. So you know some of these big magazines, uh, you know, like Playboy. That's still a magazine, but also yeah, pull exists Playboy, on- Doug. Put yeah. Playboy real quick. <laughs> yeah, pull, that one up. That. pull that one up. Yeah. Yeah. So Maxim exists, huh? Yeah, like yeah. Oh yeah. wow, look at that. Yeah. See, I used to. Oh yeah. See, now it's Maxim, more like GQ now. Huh? Maxim was basically how you got away with getting a magazine with girls on it with your parents that wasn't porn, right? Mm-hmm. Because it would have the car on the cover. Yeah. And mom would that was never, the workaround. She would never open it. You yeah. know what I mean? So she, oh, he's reading about cars. Yeah. No, I'm not. Did you it ever was, do that trick where you'd have like the magazine cover that was different than the actual magazine? Oh my god, dude! Yeah. You know what I did? You know what I did once? I almost got caught. So this was the this was the jam. Kids have no idea. What, you know, when you had a dirty magazine and you're going to go take a shower, what you do is you take the dirty magazine, you fold it in half, and then wrap the towel around it. Wow. Walk into the bathroom, right? And uh, you ever, ever have you guys ever done that? And then it falls out of the towel? No. Yeah. <laughs> no this is just you brought you. it with you in the shower? In the bathroom. Oh. Do you understand? Because yeah, I got to yeah, pull yeah. it out of my oh, hiding spot. I pull it from the hiding spot, uh-huh. wrap it in the bath towel. And then I'm holding it like, oh, I'm going to go take a shower now, right? But I'm yeah. actually bringing it in the bathroom. <laughs> I see. So I bring it in there one time, and it fell out of the ta- out of the towel, yeah. and it hit the ground, and my mom was standing right there, and I kicked it under the door. No. I was like, probably it's the most Matrix thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> wow. And you got away with it? So, nobody's Nothing. Proud. I was proud that it's I did better than me. I got caught a few times. You, you got you, <laughs> I, I, you know Wait, what? More than what? That doesn't surprise yeah. me at all. Yeah, I did. Mr. <laughs> I had a, an apple on I'm my face sloppy. yesterday. Yeah, exactly. too sloppy. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, have like, yeah. good like, cleanup skills. You well, know what of, I mean? oh, whoa. Yeah. How'd you get caught? <laughs> yeah. you, Dude, I, this did, you have it, did you stick yeah. it to the shower I told wall? this story <laughs> in the very beginning of the podcast where it was like, I, I basically, this, this is in the era of like AOL, you know, where stuff like, you know, is available online all of a sudden and it's this whole new world and, you and print it? I printed it and it took about an hour but it was so worth it you know I don't even know if it went all the way through it was like you know three quarters of the way I'm like that's enough yeah. snatch <laughs> and then brought that with me in the shower so yeah. I actually put it up in the corner where it wouldn't get water <laughs> Just for inspiration, you know what I mean? Like it's just there, like wow. And then you forgot to take and it down. I forgot. I left it in there. My mom found it. <laughs> oh my god! One hundred percent. No way out of that too. No, there's no, no lie had, or like. It, oh, you know that fell out of my pocket. Yeah, bro, yeah that's yeah, dead. And mounted itself bro, in the bathroom shower. You know the worst part about that is I'm sure they had like counseling and things around it. You know, because they probably went to the pastor and were like, you know, trying to figure out how to like approach me, like, no. you know, because they sat me down. And they're like trying to discuss. Like I told like, you, my wow. mom. Was it, like, was oh it my a, god, I don't want to talk about. Was this. it a really bad one, or was it just regular nudity? No, it was like um, aggressive. Like two girls and a guy, kind of a thing. Oh yeah. So it was uh, Dude, aggressive. The 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 the, the dirty yeah. movie I almost got caught with. I can't even say the title on this podcast. Mm. That's how bad it was. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and my mom. You were bad early then, huh? Oh yeah, and my mom tried to grab it out of my hand because we I was watching my cousins. She walks in. I hit eject, and the VCR back in those days took forever to eject. So it's like you hit the button. It's like, meh, 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 meh. and then she's like walking up, and I grab it. Yeah. And she's like, what is that? What's that movie? And I could and I have the, t- the title looking right at me. Ugh. And I, if she just read the title, it would have broke her heart. Yeah. So I literally, this I swear to God, this is a true story. I was Snap in half. 14 years old, I crushed it. Yeah. Oh. I crushed it. And with my bare like gold, hands, dude. That was pure fear. Yeah, generated there. Oh, <laughs> I, what a I, like Justin, I remember uh, the when AOL first hit the scene, right? And in printing off nude photos that you, when we'd have to wait, right, for the the window that one of our moms went. Uh, oh, while it was yeah, printing, went out to yeah, the store, went to the store or something. And I remember, like, you know, her pulling up from the. Thing. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, like, come on, come on, come on, <laughs> hurry up. <laughs> we go a little bit further, we're almost there. Like, I remember that, dude. What? But so it's paper one, jam. one buddy is no! like standing yeah. watch at the window, yeah. you know, so like she's coming, she's pulling up yeah. right now, she's pulling up. I got a story for you. So you know how when you try to print something, if it doesn't print because there's a paper jam or something like that, it keeps it in queue? Yeah. Okay, it's happening to my right. cousin, dude. No. Yes, yeah, so my cousin was going to print some shit and got his copy, something happened, didn't come out, but it was in the queue. Little sister's doing a report. 
Hits print. Oh, guess what? Oh, we need paper. Puts the paper in. Guess what comes out first? Mm. Yeah. Naked shit. Yeah. Oh, yes. Naked stuff right, awesome. on the, right on the printer. Oh, the good old days, right? Those, yeah. Now it's easy. It's now, easy yeah, now. nobody cares. Yeah. You, know what's, you know what's crazy now is that you're, you're seeing, because how accessible pornography is, it's actually a problem. Yeah. It's, it was a good thing that it was hard to get to when we were younger because now your oh, yeah. kids have erectile dysfunction yeah. and pornography addiction. They just they just know way too much, way too soon. It's too. It's, you know? it's too. It needs to be it's a problem. Yeah, it's like you have to. Well, look, you got to have to fight for it. Well, look bit. what you're getting on Instagram now. Like what oh you my get God. you it, in at what we're getting on Instagram today is more graphic than what I was looking at in magazines or what I was printing off online that yeah. I was super, it would get me in trouble, right? Like that, a normal, just a random girl's Instagram feed today would get me in trouble for looking at that just, you know, two decades oh, easily. ago. Yeah. So, you know, and so imagine if you're a kid where that's like, you you see that all the time. You have to es escalate that to the bro, next level, you or else you don't get aroused by that anymore because it's I, everywhere. I used to watch the Scrambled Channel. Yeah. You guys remember that? Yes, yeah, man. This is when. So back in the day, you used to uh, uh, do the satellite back from G six to uh, N seven, and you you yeah. toggle it back and yeah. forth. Yeah. N seven, G six, and as as a satellite, you just see back a bunch of yeah. like snow, <laughs> yeah. and then every now and then you get like a moan. Yeah, you're like, yeah! yeah, and one nipple, yeah, yeah. you know, pops up. <laughs> ah! Look at that! <laughs> That's crazy! <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, oh, man. Penny catalog or whatever. Like that's what that's the crazy. extent of it. Crazy. Yeah. Anyway, dude, I wanted to tell you guys something very interesting. What's that? Uh, so Jessica got some blood tests and stuff done to look at her nutrient levels and her iron levels, which were low before. They were kind of low before. Mm -hmm. Now are in the upper limit, and so now we're. She's like, oh, I got to be careful with eating red meat. Like, how how did this happen? Now part of it is. She started eating some organ meats and organ meats in, in particular liver, super nutrient dense. Yeah. But do you know what the other reason why her iron levels start to get why? pretty kind of high? Hmm. Because we cook our steak in a cast iron oh, skillet. I forgot. Oh, about wow. That. Did you know that? Yeah. I've, I had definitely heard about that. When you cook food in a cast, and this is not necessarily a bad thing, it depends, right? If you're, if you have too much iron or supplementing with iron, you might want to be careful. But if you cook food in an iron skillet, some iron goes into the food. I think it's between four to eight milligrams. Wow. Depending on what you cook in there. Now, the bad part is I love cooking steak in a cast iron steel. It's my favorite thing. Oh, it's one of the best. Oh, dude, we got the 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 New York strip from Butcher Box. Mm -hmm. And she I don't know how I don't cook. I don't I don't do a lot of cooking, but she puts this like garlic marinade on it, puts it in the in the skillet both sides, throws it in the oven. Oh yeah. my god. God. So you sear the outsides, right? To yes. Keep the juices and you put it in the oven. I don't even like barbecuing. The rest. I don't like barbecuing. I know much. it's exact. I know. It, well, especially if I'm doing like a fillet, you know, one of their fillets. Like I do that all the time from Butcher Box. I love that, dude. That's oh. the, the New York cut you got from. There? I haven't used. I haven't or bought that. That's about like the, it. actually, it's about the only thing I think I haven't. Oh, I've it's tried good. almost everything. Yeah. They have. So the ribeye is good. The New York, <clears throat> believe it or not, usually I like ribeye more, but I like their New York more. Has either one of you guys had their fish yet? I haven't had their fishy. That's the other thing I haven't had. Yeah. And I know they're doing. They're doing something right now. They were doing something for valentine's day i know they did something for the salmon and the filet mignon i like, saw that yeah. yeah i was like oh that would have been a good idea what, so have you had their salmon i have i've had their wild it's wild uh salmon it's the some of the healthiest salmon you can get and it's good it's very good oh. but you know there's a difference between farm raised salmon in taste and the, the 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 wild stuff uh the wild stuff is leaner yeah, it's a lot leaner. So you have to be careful. You can't overcook it. If you overcook it, yeah, it cooks fast. Huh? Yes. Do you, know, do you know? Maybe Doug can fact check this. Cause I don't know if someone told me this or I cooks re fast read too. it somewhere. Mm -hmm. But you know that fish in, in that I that are in farms, they they change they change their sex. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, because oh, they're they're confined so much together that they they it's like in prison. I don't think it's happens. I don't I don't think it's the same idea. <laughs> they're like fuck it. There's nobody else around. Yeah. Hey, look look up uh, farm fish change sex. I think that's a thing, Doug. Mm. I think that's a. Uh, uh, happens. I think they do that in order to mate, right? Or no, whatever. no, no, no. It's not a good thing. It's something that happens when they're when they're only in farms. They do don't. You, it doesn't happen in wild. You know what they do to some salmon that's uh, farmed? They add. They dye it. So when you buy it at the store, it looks nice and pink. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. have heard shenanigans like yeah. that. Yeah, now so. here's the thing with farmed fish. Uh, that's probably the future of fish. It's mm -hmm. if you think about it, 
Fish is one of the only widely consumed foods that we still hunt in the wild. Mm -hmm. Like we don't do that with beef or we don't do that with uh, lots of other stuff. But fish, we still fish in the ocean, no. um, and it, because of the cons because there's so many people on Earth and how much we're consuming, farmed may be just the future. And there are different ways of farming that are a little better. But of course, st still today, wild is your is your best bet. Were you ever to fact check me, Doug? Yeah, it looks like it's tilapia. Only tilapia that so does. So what they're doing is they're using some type of hormone drug to change females to males. Oh. And that makes uh, larger fish oh, in a Alex shorter Jones period of time. Was right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hold on. What if those oh, – this is – okay, what was the conspiracy that those chemicals are getting our water? It's something like that. Really? What was the whole thing with frogs? I just <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? There was Alex some Jones. conspiracy about uh, I missed it. frogs changing the or yeah. sex or Doug, something. didn't yeah. you uh, – have you guys done the ribs? From, yeah. I have not yet. I did them last weekend for the first time. How did you cook them? I actually went to Traeger to get the recipe because I have a Traeger grill. Yeah, yeah. And it's called, I think, fall off the bone ribs. Takes yeah. three hours to do them. Oh, okay. Amazing. I, I saw, Amazing. I had I didn't do butcher box, but I did the Traeger recipe. So I that's normally where I get my recipes is Traeger. Traeger's got some killer recipes. And Traeger also sponsors some of these these barbecue guys. So I like to get I get my butcher box meat, but then I actually go to Traeger because I have a grill also, mm -hmm. and actually get a lot of their recipes and cook the meat. And I've had I, I did the fall off the bone one, but it wasn't the time I did it. I didn't have butcher boxes uh, ribs that time, so I'll have to try those. They were really good though. Did huh? it fall off the bone? It did. Really? My friends who are food snobs, I mean, they they spend a lot of money going to San Francisco and eating at nice restaurants that. These are the best ribs they've ever had. Oh wow! And they've been to all types of different uh, huh. barbecue barbecue places yeah. in the area. So, wow. I got to say, I did a pretty good job. But well, you're a hell of a dang. cook. That's a it helps to have good meat to start with. Doug, yeah. Doug is a good cook, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah, I love it when you cook for us, dude. Did I tell you guys? I didn't bring this up. I don't think I did. Did I tell you guys about the heading limits that they're starting to put in soccer in the UK? Oh, because of concussions and um, uh, CTE. Soccer. Soccer. Yeah. So well, under under eighteen, now they're putting limits on uh, how often or how they allow them to hit and head the ball. It because, makes sense because of volume, right? Yes, and it's, I don't know this. I don't have the name on. It. I thought I saved it, but I didn't. I don't have the guy's name. But there was a there's a famous uh, UK soccer player who died, I believe, before the age of sixty from CTE. No, from playing soccer. Wow, I didn't know there was a case like that in soccer. Yes, wow, from soccer. Well, I thought I, I thought I saw somewhere that they actually said that it's worse, that that heading the ball is worse than like most football hits. No, really? Yes, I hmm. could have sworn I, I read that somewhere too, where if someone gets up, if someone hit, and think about that, a ball traveling at like forty miles an hour at you, and you jump yeah. and you hit it with your head. Yeah, it's because it's more the vibration than I think it is the actual impact, right? It's the vi it's the the the, the brain bouncing off the back of your skull, uh -huh. right? That's what causes concussions, right? Well, what yeah. it is is the it's not, of course. Uh, what is it called when you get knocked unconscious? Concussion. Concussions are bad. But what's causing the problems is just the repeated blows. Mm -hmm. It's just the over and over. That's why boxing has. It, that's why boxing can be so bad. It's not the knockouts. It's that they wear gloves and that that allows you to pound someone in the head without hurting your hands. Yeah, that's why UFC is healthier, right? And, and that's why uh, bare knuckle boxing would probably be safer. Not for your obviously your skin and bones. Bare well, knuckle you break boxing. your hands. Which, yeah, yeah. And you can't just pound yeah, someone. It doesn't in the allow head. you to just keep going. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And it, that's the thing too, and it any impact, any physical impact where you're like colliding with somebody, like so, all these sports are, you know, going to be susceptible to CTE when they start really like peering into that. But yeah, it's interesting. I, I've been looking into that a lot, and I, I saw there was this like Doctor Dan something I forget, but he runs a a, a clinic. Um, I, I think it's in Vegas, but they do a lot of like treatments for CTE and. Um, they're, they were using, I think it was, uh, like psilocybin. They were like using, or, what? yeah, they were using like some unconventional methods to, to try and treat it. Um, I, I, I want to look, I want to even have him on the show. I'm going to look into that because well, I'm really interested in, you know, like treating and, and getting ahead of this before it becomes a problem. Well, you guys remember when I told you about creatine and how they're finding that that helps prevent, uh, brain trauma. Right. Um, I actually got a DM from somebody who got in a car accident and had a concussion 
started supplementing with creatine right afterwards, and he said he noticed a pronounced difference. Oh, interesting. In his recovery from from taking the creatine, oh, wow. which I think is uh, is absolutely fascinating. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, what's going on with the uh, coronavirus right now? I, I keep getting mixed. Doctor Dan Engel, sorry, I was mixed that up. mixed uh, messages from so, people. So uh, should it, we be there, scared? Are we worried? Well, so we I mean, thought. What's the deal here? So we thought that that the the cases flattened out, but now it turns out they they didn't. They're actually spiking. So there's far more more cases. And Chinese, so Chinese state-run television announced on uh, its website that everyone returning to Beijing is required to isolate themselves for two weeks. So anybody going to Beijing from other parts of China, they're required to isolate themselves. And they're also saying that anyone who does not comply will be held accountable according to law. So what's also happening over there right now, which is really crazy, is you have people who are making videos, like social media videos, getting them out into the internet and saying things like, you know, they're not letting us out of our house. I can't visit family or they took away my aunt or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, video gets taken down. That person no longer to be heard, probably thrown in jail or whatever. It's getting really, it's interesting. It's very mm -hmm. interesting. And the, the trouble with a country like China that is so centrally controlled is that it's hard to know what to believe? Yeah, because they have a history of. I mean, all these these state run, you know, media comp, you know, all these communist or, or or centrally planned governments tend to put out news that's not true. I mean, we have enough trouble here with our media, but yeah. at least our media is is, is a little well, bit. Well, they more don't dispersed. like individuals like just putting it out there without them screening it first. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they just showed that uh, I think something like seventeen hundred health Chinese healthcare workers. Uh, came down with the coronavirus. Wow. So, yeah, I don't think we should be scared, but the but it did surpass SARS. Mm. Remember when SARS was a big deal? But it still pales into comparison to the... And this was all like, like centrally located China, like in, in mainland China, not like towards the coast. Most of it. Yeah. And now North Korea, that shares a border with China, um, and a lot of the, the people who are infected uh, are around that area. They said they have zero, of course. No, no, we have nothing here in North Korea. And scientists are like, that's impossible. Yeah. There's no way you guys are so close. There's no way you guys don't have any infections coming in here. Yeah. But again, North Korea. North Korea, yeah. I don't yeah. know. How they, don't, they don't seem to tell the truth. that information ever. is there. Speaking of uh, illness, you guys hear about Justin Bieber? No. Yeah. He's got Lyme disease. Oh, really? Yeah. He, when, did that, when did that come out? Recently, he revealed that he got a diagnosis of Lyme disease. That's which a tough one to deal with. Yeah. It is because uh, the symptoms can be pretty bad and pretty, and sometimes general. Like, Do you ever really get rid of it either? It seems to stay forever. You can if you treat it early. Is it considered an autoimmune? No. It's not. It, no, no, no. It's an actual disease you you get and i believe i don't know if they're bacteria i think they're considered bacteria but they burrow themselves in your body and they can cause all kinds of different problems and the treatment for lyme disease at least the conventional treatment is a long heavy heavy dose of antibiotics isn't it where it originally came from like ticks or something like that What's, yeah. is, is that where is it is it only is that the only way you get it still that's the only one i know well you get it from ticks and then there is some uh Controversies to whether or not it can be it can be transmitted through sexually transmit oh, uh, through right. sexual contact. The official uh, statement is that you can't, but then a lot of people are saying no. I think that's I think you can. Yeah. Uh, but it's crazy because it's it's something that causes like fever, joint pain, fatigue, neurological type uh, issues. Sometimes you'll get it and then you won't get any symptoms for years. Yeah. Or you'll get crazy symptoms and they'll go away. Then yeah. they'll come back. Yeah, I knew a few people who had it, and then one that had symptoms a lot like mono, like where they just were so extremely fatigued they couldn't do anything. I, I know somebody. Oh, I've who, had clients. You guys never had clients that have it? Um, I don't think I. Oh, have. I've had a couple yeah, clients. I don't know if I've had a client. Really? That had it. Yeah, and it's it is it's so like they could be totally fine one day, and then the next day just fatigued, and that's a good. I think it's a good um, example. Like it's it's like mono. Like they just they're so fatigued, weak, and tired, uh, but they could have been just perfectly fine the, the day before. So I had a, a, a friend, a friend of the family who got Lyme and one of her symptoms was she would have ravenous, insatiable hunger. Mm. Like now she was normal body weight, uh, didn't have any issues with food or anything like that. Once she, once this, she got the Lyme, her appetite was so ravenous. She gained 
I mean, she got her body weight over like 300 pounds. Wow. And she's like, she tries to explain it. She says, my appetite, she's like, it's not a normal appetite. And it was never satisfied, like even after a big meal? No, or? she said she'd be stuffed and couldn't eat anymore, but she would still have this ravenous oh, that's, that's appetite. Terrible. And she said, it's, yeah, it's a terrible, terrible feeling uh, yeah. to have. Wow. You know, kind of oh. kind of crazy stuff. No, that's that is crazy. Anyway. I had some business news that I wanted to uh, bring up. That Are you guys familiar with the, the company Wayfair? Wait a minute. You Sounds know that is. Doug, familiar. you know that is, do don't know? you? They make yeah, furniture, They have all right? types of things, furniture. Yeah, yeah. you guys don't. Haven't you seen them off of uh, yeah, 580 that they're, they just oh. built that massive, like right when you, I think it's, uh, let me think here, um, track. I think it's like um, Tracy area. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Right when you're heading off, of, oh, uh, right when you come over the the Ultimate Pass yep. and then you see they built this massive one. You can also buy stuff online, right? They yeah, so, yeah. That's, so that's what they're known for. And I, I remember with Katrina, we so we bought was half of our furniture is Wayfair. The other half is uh, from the other, like their competitor and I can't think of the name off the top of my head. And there's uh, that one's not too. There's Wayfair right there. Mm -hmm. It's like but, IKEA. No, 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 it's not. Actually, it's really nice. So, so Wayfair and the other company that I can't think of right now are they. And what what makes them uh, really competitive and not IKEA is although they have some um, comparable things. Like so, you'll go to this. There's these warehouses, and they are they're bigger than any mall or any shop or anything I've ever been in my life. They're just they're fucking massive. And they have well, they have it set up where it's like okay you go to like kitchen dining sets like that's what we're shopping for and they have it for things that I wouldn't say as cheap as IKEA but like reasonably priced mm -hmm. like on the lower end to all the way to like super custom mm -hmm. very expensive and everything in between hmm. so if you can imagine uh, like a, a store the size of Target of that would be just the section of dining rooms. Oh, right. So it's and, it, and it would be like everything everything from that cheap, like you're saying, all the way and everything in the middle. Dang. And I remember telling Katrina when we were shopping, I'm like, how the, f how the hell do they make this profitable? Like just the square footage yeah, of this building. Yeah. Right. The, the, their prices are unbelievably competitive. I don't get it. And I th this article popped up in my feed um, the other day. Is and it just it, like a showroom, or do they actually buy on site? No, so it's the show, there's, they have a, sh a showroom that massive. What's the? Do you know the uh, Living Spaces? Thank you, Doug. Living Spaces is the other company, and they they both have. There's one Living Spaces in Fremont. You guys have driven by it. I guarantee. There's one over here by yeah, yeah. Uh, on Blossom Hill, and uh, what is that? Uh, it's next to. Um, is there one over here, Doug? Yeah, there is right by Oak. They just opened I it. I haven't seen it. They uh, just opened it. I mean, these things are. I mean, when you're driving on Fremont, you'll see they have, and not only do they have like this massive showroom, like warehouse size. That I'm saying is literally the size of probably three or four Costco's could fit inside of oh, it. Wow. Then they also have the the warehouses that store all the furniture, which is probably 10x. Okay. Yeah, the size of it and. I was telling. I remember telling Katrina. I just it doesn't mathematically make sense to me. So, anyways, I, this comes in my feed just the other day that Wayfair uh, lays off um, I think 550 employees. So three percent of their working staff oh, wow. stock drops like 28 percent, and it, they've been in business for 14 years, and they still are not profitable. So it's one of these b businesses that have been playing for the long game. That oh, just you know, nobody is ever going to buy furniture from you know stores. Any of the future is all online. Yeah, and so they've been they've been running it for 14 years in the red. Like you have to have so wow. much capital yeah. to be able to do that, and you have to be banking on that in order. To, I, I, and I don't know who is behind it financially. I don't know if you can f find out who Wayfair and who Living Spaces. But they're a New York-based company, so they're East Coast, and they've made their way over here. But I've seen them popping up all over the valley and now the bay, and they are just massive. Wow. You know, it's I would never, you know, and to anybody who's in the retail business, like, good for you. Um, but what a difficult, the, the cost, the capital it requires to start that kind of a business, the margins are not phenomenal whatsoever. The amount of people you need to run something like that, it's just a big monster. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and that's why they fail oftentimes. So you, yeah. neither one of you guys have actually been in one of these, though, huh? No, I actually, I, w I wouldn't mind checking it out because there is that that component to buying, uh, you know, stuff for your house. Like I do want to go physically and look at things. A lot of times, it is kind of they're dope. I mean, you, you see the way my house is staged right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's from walking through those. Like we literally put like rooms together. You like, know what I like to do for that is mm -hmm. I like to go to uh, model homes. 
and see how they stage their houses. Oh, yeah. I love doing that, just yeah. walking through and seeing how and they... And a lot of them get that from these places. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sure, absolutely. Sure. They, they, sure. they get it from these places, and it's... But now it makes sense to me that they, they've they just been running it. They're betting in the long game that they, this is how everybody will buy furniture mm-hmm. in the future because it just... It didn't... What compete. a scary business model. I know, though, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, seriously. Yeah. So, um, I got some news about a, a drug that just got pulled off or is about to get pulled off the market. Um, and I find this fascinating because the our FDA that approves drugs is one of the most extensive regulatory you know processes that exists. It's like a I don't remember what the cost was to get a drug from inception to FDA approval. But ten it's, years. It's ten years, yeah. and I think it's a hundred million dollars. Yeah, an it's insane crazy. amount of money because the regulations around it are incredible, mm-hmm. and yet stuff like this happens all the time. So there's a weight loss drug called Belvic, Belvic, and Belvic now is going to get pulled off the market because it's been shown to increase the risk, significantly increase the risk of cancer, including pancreatic and lung cancer. Dang. So now it's going to get pulled off the market. One billion dollars to get to market. Yep. Oh, one billion. My bad. What the? F- that yeah. is crazy. Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you know, I, I here's the thing too. Our regulatory agency, you know, I understand that we want to go crazy with how how safe we things are, mm-hmm. but you know what that actually does? It actually prevents a lot of innovation and a lot of drugs from coming to market. Of course it does, yeah. uh, because the cost is just crazy. And when you, let's say you're going to come out with a new pain medicine. Are you going to just manipulate an opiate that you know they all kind of work? Or do you want to go with a new radical new That might innovation? not work. That might not work. Yeah. That's why you see like a million different variations of chemotherapy, opiates, and, and shit like that. And you don't see like a lot of innovation because the cost is insane. And yet still, this stuff happens like this all the time. You have a drug that it got approved, went through mm-hmm. the whole thing, got approved. And now they're like, oh, it causes cancer. Imagine how irritating that is. Yeah. You're, you know, you take this drug, and it, the way it works. How is long by, was it on the market? I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, because I mean, like a study to find out if it causes cancer, like you know, that must have taken a long time. Well, sometimes you know, sometimes we don't find things out until people have been using them for a long right. time. And you look at generational studies. This is why I tend oh. to opt for nature. Right. Well, and it's antibiotics not, is an example. Yeah, of this. And, and the reason why I opt, out, I always go the nature route when people compare like, what about artificial sweeteners versus natural sweeteners? The reason why I'll typically go natural is because natural stuff has been used for thousands of years. So although we don't have, maybe, you know, maybe didn't have to pass FDA, you know, uh, trials and stuff like that, although it did pass certain ones, it it's because it's been used for so long and humans have been observing what it does and what it doesn't do for so long. That to me is more trustworthy than the one billion dollar you know FDA approval process, which literally every single day drugs get taken off the market because they they find out that they cause uh, you know some big. Do you problem. know what the number is? Is it like is it like a drug gets pulled off every day, or is it like I don't remember? Lots. Maybe Doug can find it. But like how many? Yeah, how many drugs a year get pulled off after yeah. they've been? Because that's crazy to me to think that you go through the billion dollar process to get it done. It's out and and everyone's taking it for five, ten years, mm-hmm. and then it gets pulled off. Like that's crazy. To yeah. Me. What was yeah. that one? There was that one, and some and some not all. I mean, of course, most of them don't make the news. It's usually the big ones that make the news. There was that one uh, arthritis drug a while ago that they pulled off because they saw that caused you know heart damage and, and problems with the heart. Uh, but this stuff happens all the time. Doug, do you, any any luck finding? No numbers yet. Okay, yeah. But I do know that it happens a a lot. Yeah. That drugs get pulled off all the time. What was the the Nike extortion thing that was that Doug was talking about? What was that all about, Doug? That uh, somebody tried to. Yeah, Stuart Nike. I I read a little bit of that. Like there was uh, this lawyer that uh, represented Stormy Daniels. I think through that whole case, right? So this guy's already kind of a shuckster. I don't know. I guess he uh, had been in a meeting with Nike and basically was was kind of confronting them, telling them he knew information about uh, you know some some leads about like shenanigans in the high school level of them. Uh, paying, you know, for, for oh, athletes. Oh, that's been happening forever. That's right. been part. So there's a good documentary on, ugh, God, I think it's HBO that did a good one. And I forget, and I don't know the name off the top of my head, but it's like, it was all about the sneaker culture and like how that all got started Yeah, and how they started to first influence kids. So, and Nike was the ones who did that. And, uh, I cannot think of the guy. There's a, yeah. there, the, oh, the documentary is about the guy who's responsible for that. Michael Avenatti. Not him, though. No, that's not him? No, no, that's yeah, not him. Yeah, so okay. he, I mean, basically, he was trying to extort money from them uh, to basically, like, 
quiet him about all this information that apparently he he had or whatnot. And then in in court, he was trying to like defend himself, like he was just you know he was just trying to play hard negotiations, you know, with with them in terms of like them him being able to represent them in other cases. So it started off as something really brilliant and then got really corrupt, right? So I, I think it was one of the most brilliant moves ever made. And I can't think of the guy who did it for Nike originally, but he. He was smart. He went and saw these programs with kids in high school and stuff like that, and that they didn't have gear. They had to go buy their own stuff and said, wait a second, these are all the athletes of the school. Yeah, this is the future. Yeah, these the future of you know college and prof- potential professional mm-hmm. athletes. Let's give them all Nike shoes. Let's hook them all up with Nike shoes and, sure. get, and get them we- and get these kids wearing all this gear, and they sure. give it to them for free. That makes sense. And because that became such a money maker for Nike, because it became so popular, now that they would just they start swooping up all these schools, because it became such a big deal, it became a backdoor thing. Now, like, okay, I tell you what, as coaches, you know, as a high school coach, I would say, hey, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll let you do sponsor all my kids, but I want a kickback of. X oh, amount of dollars. Wow. So it got it started off as like a really brilliant way for Nike to market, mm-hmm. and then it got shady and dirty, like anything does, where that there's money involved, and that's exactly what happened. But really, though, the guy who did it, he did it first with Nike. Then I think he he went over and worked for Adidas for a little bit. I wish I knew the name of the documentary. I felt uh, maybe Jackie will, will remember because mm-hmm. I know I've talked about that documentary about a year ago. It was a really good documentary. Uh, but they kind of get into that, and it sounds like that that's what this is connected to, is that there still is, even though they've been, it's already been out outed about all this. Mm-hmm. Are you looking for it right now, Doug? Yeah. It, a Nike documentary? No, I don't think There's that's... There's a lot of Nike documentaries. Yeah, yeah. I did not no, realize there were so many. Yeah, no, I don't... And I'll, I'll, I'll look it up, and I'll, I'll find... Maybe I'll put it in my story so people know. I, I think yeah. I, I posted it in my story when it first came out, so it's been... It's been a while since I uh, hmm. this was we've talked about this, but I think it's connected and tied to that, hmm. and I'm sure he's got inside information of it still going on. Interesting, and, yeah. Interesting. So, are you guys um, ready for this uh, presidential election to start heating up, or what? <laughs> yeah, this you said this Who's is the little- front runners now. Oh, dude. So, well, uh, Trump's going to be so hard to beat. He, a, a Gallup poll just came out, and Trump received the highest approval rating for any president. In the last two decades, sixty-three wow. percent of the public uh, support his handling of the economy. Which, I mean, let's let's be honest. This the economy is this is one of the best economies we've had in a very very long time. Yeah, and and it's hard to to beat that. Yeah, it's, that's a hard one to fight. It's very very hard to fight, and unless the economy takes a dump or something happens, I don't see anybody challenging him. As of the recording of this podcast, Bernie Sanders. Uh, is is seems to be doing pretty well. I don't see him. Yeah. I do not see him beating Trump at all. Soul Man. Oh, okay. Soul Man is the name of the documentary. There you go. And okay. I did bring it up. I talked about it before. Sunny Sunny Valcro or Valco is the the guy that is behind. Yeah. Like orig- It's a really good documentary. Mm-hmm. So why if you're interested in the Nike story and all that. So is he gonna uh, run as Democrat? Because didn't the DNC like pretty much snub him last time? They did. So we'll see what happens if they end up giving him the the nomination. Um, but uh, I really, I is mean, is Tulsi gosh. still in in no, the running? No, she's, she's, she's not, not even no, close. No, no, no. No. But you know, yeah. it, here's something that he. He just said, you know, Bernie Sanders just proposed uh, a, a full government takeover of electric- electricity production. Hmm. So let's just centralize energy production in America. Oh God! And the way he, as if it's not centralized enough with PG and E. Oh, and you know, <laughs> just and, to get even I more. And, and and what a terrible <laughs> idea to give them that much power and control. I mean, I you know, I used to, I had a client that they lived, already have a hell of power and control. Oh, it's ridiculous, it's unbelievable. It's going to get worse. I can't believe somebody who calls themselves an open socialist is even getting that many votes. As if socialism isn't had enough of a terrible track record. That's why it won't yeah. work. Did you? Is the Michael Bloomberg thing a real thing or whatever? The whole tweeting thing that's going on. I don't on? know he's, about that, but I know he's, he's he's paying his way to the front. I mean, yeah. is I think, he going to get in there? Or I what? think it is. I've already seen a bunch of people that have like millions of followers that are and they're and they they're putting hashtag ad afterwards. Yeah. And saying that Bloomberg paid paid them uh, to do an ad or whatever like that to make him cool. It's I, it's very smart if it if it's true. Because these people, you got all these influence that are posting about Bloomberg, and he's kind of making fun of himself a little bit in it. See if you can look that up. Like uh, uh, Bloomberg, uh, used wow! Look at that. He advertising surpassed, on- he surpassed Biden in a, in a Florida poll. Will you wow. look at that? 
But to be quite honest with you, if I had to pick somebody to go against Trump, if I was like, I want to, you know, if I was a Democrat. Yeah, if you could, if you could do a good pick, like which I, one would it be? I would pick Bloomberg or Biden. I don't yeah. see anybody else even. Now, I, don't, I still don't think they'll, they'll beat them because, again, the economy's just crushing and uh, that's hard to beat. When the economy's crushing, it's hard. It's like trying to knock out the champ. It's well, very, very especially difficult. when you, 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 even people that hate Trump and don't like him, if he's, if, you're getting if you're making more money or you you're doing better because he's in office. It's hard to like completely Bro, the, hate him. The unemployment, it's like I hate him as a person, but his policies are kind of benefiting well, me right the now. Well, un, the unemployment rate is is at all time lows. But even more, when Obama was president, we said we had declining unemployment numbers. Of course, he was coming out of a terrible recession, so it wasn't too hard to to, to come out of that. I mean, any improvement you're going to improve naturally. But what happened during Obama was you had a, a, ma- a massive amount of people dropping out of the workforce. Mm-hmm. So, and they never reported that. So they would say, oh, you know, unemployment's going down, but they wouldn't report that far less people are working or participating in the workforce, and they don't get counted. So because they drop out and stop looking, they're not considered unemployed. Now, under Trump, what's, that started to reverse. More and more people are entering into the workforce. This is all good news. This all looks very, very good. So who do you got left? Is, is Michael Chang? Is that uh, another candidate? No. Or, um, you, you have a tennis Chang. player. I was going to say. Is oh, <laughs> wrong name. Yeah, that, that was his I name. Thought, I thought that was a news agent. You talking about the other guy who promised everybody $1,000? Yeah, yeah. Uh, universal uh, basic yeah. income. No, like he's he made done. made huge pitch for that. No, he's done. Uh, you got Bloomberg, Biden, Sanders, Warren, um, and I, yeah, and Tulsi. Yeah, uh, no, she's not even. Yeah. She's not, oh, she's not even. In a I chance. mean, she, they're trying, but she ain't gonna do it. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, we'll see what happens. Interesting. First question is from CD Champs Seventeen. Saw an ad on TV for the Jenny Craig DNA meal plan for weight loss. It seems like a clever marketing BS. Any viability to this? It is clever marketing BS. So the science. <laughs> <laughs> next right. question. And yep. done. And we're done. No, next uh, the the science on DNA and how nutrition affects DNA and what works best for you is still in its infancy. Not yeah. to mention, we're finding that they're jumping the gun fast on this. Though. They are, and it, because it sounds cool, it sounds yeah. individualized. Uh, there's so many. By the way, here's the thing you need to understand: there is a very, in, very, very strong individual variance with how you react to food. And, it, and it, it's a, there's a lot of factors. One of them is DNA. We still don't understand it fully, but it is one of them is DNA. You have your microbiome. That's another thing that affects how you respond to food. You have your own emotional reactions and connections to food. And nobody ever takes that into account. And, and that's co- the thing that you coach when you coach people. And some people claim blood type makes a difference too. Yeah, well, oh, right. I haven't yeah, seen this, any science to support that, but you're-, you're Yeah, they, that, that, that diet's still out there. For no, sure. yeah, no, I, 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 read the, I read the book, like, I don't know, it was probably six, seven years ago when blood I read it. Blood type diet? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they try and support it with some science. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, why, and why this works for anybody- is if you take somebody that is on no diet and they start following a DNA protocol diet or a, a or a blood diet. type diet, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you'll see what they all do is they point you in the direction of whole foods. None of these recommend processed foods. None of these recommend high calories. So it's a restrict, restricted calorie diet. They eliminate foods. They, they normally drive towards whole foods. And then they attach it to your DNA or your blood type. Yeah. And then you go through it and you're like, holy shit, you know what? I do feel better. Mm-hmm. Inflammation is down. My gut does feel better. It's like, okay, well, is it because you're following the blood type or the DNA diet or is it because you're actually following a diet? It is. That's why. And you have to, the thing that none of them take into account are the emotional connections and reactions to food, which is huge. It's massive. Let's say you eat a food and you know it's healthy, but you really hate eating it. I'm just using a stupid example and you force yourself to eat it, right? Now that food is going to cause a potentially a stress response in the body. Was it the food that caused a stress response physiologically or was it the emotional reaction to that food? Um, There's a lot of this. And these are the things, when I used to coach people or train people, the main thing that I would coach to was that. That was the main thing. It was very, almost never would I do things like, you know, oh, what's your ethnicity or what's your DNA or or how are we supposed to eat? It was always like, how does it make you feel? You know, what do you crave? How do you feel afterwards? What are the, the things that you're noticing? Oh, and by the way, the stuff that you're finding that works for you really well now, don't marry it because context change changes, things change, and so might the way you react and respond 
to these different foods. But you're 100% right. This diet is a low-calorie diet. So will people lose weight on it? Mm. Of course, because it's low-calories. But do there's you no know, magic in it. Do you know if they're using like Ancestry.com or one of those like other things to try and pair and, and attach like the lineage of you know their DNA and their gene pool? <laughs> no, but you know what I think is uh, – I don't know about that. Um, but here's what I think in terms of technology might be interesting. I think these continual glucose monitors and technology that measures actual reactions and responses to your body to food in real time and only to you as an individual, that's where I could see some potential value. Yeah. So something that you wear, because they have these, these, these glucose monitors, but there's other technology that's emerging, right? Mm -hmm. Where you put on a patch or whatever and it attached to an app on your phone, yeah. you eat a food and you can see in real time Insulin, cortisol, inflammatory well, they speculate. Markers. I heard uh, rumors that that you know the Apple Watch was going to incorporate a lot of that, you know, in the next generations uh, to come. So it'll be interesting to see if they can like do that and attach that. That'll actually be something of value, a metric, you know, like that it would be helpful. Yeah. Now the thing that I don't like about all these metrics is that here's here's oh, what, what a I, cool website. I know, isn't that great? You, well, Jenny Craig's massive, dude. They yeah. have so much money. Uh, here's something that I see as as a drawback. Um, and I'll use an example of, uh, of like a keto diet, right? All these studies coming out and people saying, oh my God, ketogenic diet works real great for me. And, you know, studies come out, show it reduces inflammation. Great for cognition. Look at these blood level, you know, markers going down. Then people make the case. This is how you're supposed to eat. Carbs are harder to find in nature, whatever. It's so super, super compelling. You get very, very sold on this diet. This is it. This is the one. You try it. You lose weight. And you're like, wow, I'm losing weight. Then you start not feeling good, but you ignore it. You ignore your body, how it feels, because you've been so sold on the metrics, on all the information that you've heard about this diet, and you start ignoring your body. I fear that can happen with stuff like this, where you get this diet, and you're like, well, this is supposed to be good for my DNA. I'm going to ignore these signals and signs that my body's telling me, the constipation, the lack of energy, my skin issues. It, must, it has to be something else, because this says that it's perfect for my DNA. Th these types of uh, uh, this types of diets or the way they market them I feel like can start to push people away from paying attention to their body when when our problem with nutrition is not lack of necessarily lack of information in fact usually it's not lack of information especially nowadays it's usually a lack of connection to yourself yeah that's yeah, a, that's the attention. argument that uh, dr. Andy Galpin makes in his unplugged book is that we just almost you know, too much information that people are relying on these tools to provide this versus trying to learn and figure it out yourself. Totally. Next question is from Oliver J. Murph. Can you build a good core by only doing compound lifts and mobility exercises like the ones in MAPS Prime? Or should you incorporate special ab and core exercises as well? So I used to, for a while, uh, I was in this camp. And I did heavy mm -hmm. squats, heavy deadlifts, heavy overhead presses. Yeah. Because you're and stabilizing all that weight with your core. You are, right? So my core is strong enough to stabilize a 350-pound squat or a 500-pound deadlift or over a press or whatever. And so I'm like, okay, my core is perfectly strong. And then at some point, I wanted to start developing my abs so that they could become more visible. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I'm going to start doing some more direct work. And I realized just how weak my abs were mm -hmm. because uh, when you get stronger – you, you, the strength that you gain tends to be quite pretty specific to the to the way you're gaining that strength or to the stimulus. Mm -hmm. So my core was strong to stabilize for squats, deadlifts, and overhead presses, but it wasn't super strong to do crunches and leg raises and you know and cable chops because I never did them. Well, think of it no different than any other muscle. Imagine if the only type of exercises you did for your isometrics. biceps were isometrics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you only did I now you could you could actually build a little bit of muscle and you could have sure. decent decently strong biceps by doing just isometric holds for your bicep. You could get some value out of that. But you're missing out you're on limited. A, yeah, you're missing out on a tremendous by not using the the all of the full range of motion and the eccentric and centric portion of the exercise. So isometric is one of the three and one of the more important ones for sure. And I think you can get by. Like at least you have some core work being done there. If you're if you're squatting 350 pounds or deadlifting 500 pounds, you definitely got a pretty strong core to stabilize and support. But it's not going to contract very well or decelerate really well. So, you know, there's so, there's definitely value in that. Th this is an area, if I'm being completely transparent with my own programming, that I'm I neglect. I'm bad at, and I know I need to do it better. And I can always tell 
when I've been neglecting it for a really long time is my low back starts to bother me. Mm. Yeah. And because I have that anterior pelvic tilt and, you know, sure, I can hold my core in that position, but I, uh, to correct that, I should be doing like reverse crunches a lot more than what I'm, what I'm c currently doing. And whenever I get on it and I start to incorporate it in my routine, I always feel the relief mm -hmm. because it, it better supports my low back. I was too. just talking to Sal about this. I've been a little bit more intentional about putting like sit ups and crunches and, uh, you know, rotational moves, uh, you know, like wood chops and things like that into my routine again because of that simple fact of like already trying to address my posture just from sitting more often. And then, you know, also sitting in my truck and like commuting back and forth and, you know, Already starting to feel the effects of that on on my joints and like just the way that uh, you know I wake up in the morning having certain pains I shouldn't have, but it's really like I need to put more emphasis and attention back on you know my core and stability. Well, here's an example of like where I and I it's like I'm so aware of this. Like so when I hold Max, like when I get him up in the middle of the night and I kind of have to rock him to sleep and he's he's in front of me, right? After about like five or ten minutes, I start to feel my low back, and the way I relieve that is I squeeze my glutes and I and I ro rotate mm -hmm. my pelvis under, which is activating my lower abdominals to kind of rotate my pelvis, and that, that's because I'm weak there because I don't train it. So default is it kicks out. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. holding a baby in front of me. Now I feel this sit low back on it, right? Yeah. And then I feel this in my low back, and so now at least. I'm aware of that and I can and I can while I'm holding him I'll actually almost do like an ab crunch while I'm sitting there rocking him to try and get some work out of it but that's always a glaring glaring to me that I'm not doing enough work on my my abs and just because I heavy deadlift mm -hmm. and squat it's not enough for for support. Yeah, you know where this came from, right? Where this this myth or whatever came from? It came from powerlifters. It came from power lifters who didn't want to work out their abs. Yeah, it's no basically true. You know, I, I squat, deadlift, and overhead, you know, bench press, and do all these other. I don't need to do abs. Plus, I have a belly anyway. This is kind of a stereotype, but a lot of power lifters really don't care too much about aesthetics. Yeah. Makes sense. Your 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 sport is to it's lift a pretty the max, true stereotype. Uh, yeah, and to lift the max weight, right? Although I do know some really lean power lifters. A lot of them could care less, and so abs is kind of like a show muscle. Fucking Ben Pollock, bro. Yeah, I know. Oh, well, yeah, he's he's a unicorn. Yeah, and it, you know what? Also reminds me. It reminds me. Yeah, of, but look at all the work he does on his abs. Yeah, you ever? Oh, have you well, ever he knows. He have, does. No, have you ever talked to Ben? Like Ben, that's in everything. I mean, that's mm -hmm. why part of the, we there's planks and ab, there's ab work in all of his stuff that he does. He's right, incredibly right. strong abs. And 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 uh, this also reminds me of athletes who are like don't don't like to work out their biceps. Why do I work out my biceps? That's a that's a bodybuilder muscle. Well, your biceps help stabilize the elbow. It helps decelerate extension. So if you're a boxer or football players, a lot of times don't want to work their biceps because it's all about pushing. But you notice more injuries when you have imbalances. It's really, you know, here's the thing. And we all have this. We all have the body part. We don't necessarily like to work as much as the others. But really, if you want to maximize the your your potential for performance, minimize your risk of injury, balance is the key and regardless of what you do, that means you should train the whole body, including the core. That's right. Yeah. Calves are the only worthless one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just be born with it. Next question is from Rory Fawcett. If the last gym in the world was on fire, which piece of equipment Whoa. would you take with you and why? Uh, it's easy. Uh. Barbell. Barbell for me. If I can, if I can count that as, a, as a equipment that he's counting. The barbell is the most versatile and dumbbells too, right? Yeah, as I say, I would make the case that dumb, yeah, dumbbell would be more I, But I can't, I mean, they're interchangeable, in my opinion, if you had to pick just one. Mm -hmm. But it's the most versatile piece of equipment uh, that exists. What I about can, if it was actually a piece of machinery? If it was just a machine? Yeah, like what what piece of machine? Because I, I, I feel like this this person has to know that we would say barbell. Like like if a piece, yeah. if we're including barbells and Does dumbbells. Does that include the rack and all that or just this, the barbell? All right, Even well, that though, I, I would take a, I'd take a barbell over, the, I mean, or I would the rack isn't needed. You could, yeah. you could yeah. clean. You, I mean, because that's how they did it back in the old days, yeah, right? You'd true. literally clean the bar. You'd have to put it over. Which talk about? Um, I know some people that train this way, and I think it's, I think it's a really good rule. Like if you can't pick it up and put it over, over your back, you shouldn't squat it. I've heard that. Yeah, it's not a bad, it's not a bad rule to have. Yeah. And it, we talk about training. Well, your, then they'll do that move too, where they kind of, you see where they like sort of put it, the end of it on yeah. the ground, and yeah. then they get into it that way and sort of tilt it. That's with the it. old school. Yeah. Way. yeah, I've actually tried that before, and it's yeah, it's kind of. Cool. I think how strong you get, like for you talk about your your anti rotational stuff that you love to do, you know, or just you, your. You know how 
they used to do in climb yeah, press in, in bench press there was no rack you cleaned it you laid back with it and you did your presses right right totally. that's how they used to do it back so then. if we weren't if we're not going to go if we're not no free weights yeah we're, no free weights and no squat racks you have to pick it's a, the you aim you have to pick like a machine type of thing uh, so now can i say cables because oh yeah cables would be I, I would i would pick a big cable machine cuz it's the most versatile piece of machinery i know it's kind of cheating to say cables it is uh but that would be that but if we eliminate that one even i'm gonna say peck deck yeah no. <laughs> stupid you, i just like chess. do you even know how to use a peck deck <laughs> no i, I don't. don't think so don't you know, know what's <laughs> funny you want to know what's funny uh, i, I reverse so i i work out at a gym at a commercial gym maybe four times out of a month right four times in a month i'm there because i'm there so rarely You'll see me on a lot of machines just to add novelty. I know. He's funny. How many people are probably like, look oh, at Sal Lyle. Yeah, yeah. These you know guys how fun, lie. You know how funny it is? I'll be in there using like the, the you know, the, the machine curl or like the pec deck or something like that. Yeah. And, and inevitably someone comes up to me like, hey, I love mind pump. And I'm thinking in my head like, they probably think I'm a full yeah, of like, shit. So this is I all feel, you do. I feel the same way when I run on the treadmill. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, you know, I get my occasional runs in to make sure I can still do it. You know what I'm saying? So I like, even though we talk about, you know, cardio, where we always poo poo on cardio, it doesn't mean I never do it. It just means that <laughs> yeah. for the majority of people, most people should be resistance training and, and focusing on that more, right? So I always think when I'm running, I'm always thinking, dude, there's at least five people that listen to Mind Pump in here right now that are like looking at me like, this fucking liar, this guy <laughs> does cardio. <Yeah. laughs> so do you do you have any favorite, uh, I, I don't, Justin probably can I, can I, can can't I say, even name machines. because I don't even know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like what am I supposed uh, to say? I, I, like hammer strength stuff. Well, yeah. Yes. So I love. <laughs> just throw a name yeah, out. Yeah, just yeah. random. I love. All of their stuff. The hammer strength row machine. Oh yeah. The old Dorian Yates one. One? Yes, yeah, yeah, I do. Cool. I do lo- with all the different handle angles. Yeah, I, yeah. I do like that. It's probably a, it's a top ten favorite machine. If we're going to throw those in as machines, and if I can include things like incline bench, because incline bench for me was uh, maybe w- like when I think of later in my life, probably one of the biggest game changers for like building my physique. Like it was something I neglected as a teenage boy, and like a, even in my twenties. I avoided incline bench forever because I was terrible at it. Bench yeah. press all the time. But and didn't. plus, nobody ever asked you how much can you incline. Exactly. Everybody wants to know how much you can bench. Yeah. yeah. It took me a long time before I really, and when I focused on it, it just, it really changed my whole upper chest and my front yeah. delts. Like it was a big yeah. game changer. So, uh, Mich- okay. So besides cables, because I love cables, I love low cable pulley row, I love lat pulled out old school, you know, cable equipment. But besides that, I re- there's certain machines that if they're in a gym, I'm going to use it in my workout. Donkey calf raise. Not yeah, that definitely. one. Although, <laughs> Although that's one of my favorites. That's not a bad one for calves. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, a- it's not, but if I see but I'm t- if I see that one, I'm not like, oh, I got to use it. Only if I'm working calves. But there are certain ones like a uh, uh, pullover machine. Love pullover machines. Don't uh, ask me why. I fell in love with them when I was a kid. Hmm. One of my favorites. Um, I like uh, dip machine. Hmm. I, I love you know doing stuff on the dip machine. And then preacher curl machines, and it's a whole variety. Oh, I, of them. I love preacher curl machines yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. What about a now? Have you ever done the? There's there's some preacher curl machines that are like a preacher curl where the bench is in front of you, and then there's some that pull the elbow way up here and allow you. So it's almost like your elbow. You're you're almost doing like a a, a modified concentration curl. Which I like that machine, but I prefer the preacher. Preacher is the best. Yeah. Preacher is the best. Um, oh, here's a machine. That if I see it, I'm gonna use it, and I don't see it very often. It's the overhead tricep, uh, uh, tricep extension machine. It has the bar like this, mm. and you have to push the pedal with your feet, and it'll yeah. lift it up. Yeah, yeah. And then you do uh, yeah. triceps on it. It's not even a cable; it's actually a fixed machine. Yeah. Mm. Love that exercise. Goals Burdell has it. Yeah, love I that love, exercise love, for I, triceps. No, no, I like that one too. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. No, that's, those are those are all great ones. T bar row. Like, oh well, that yeah. of course. right. That's I don't it. even count that as a machine. I love it. Yeah, really. I mean, it's got. You can count that as a machine. I feel like that's right. a that's a, you know it's an apparatus. I think you can count that. Oh, you yeah. know what else is a great one? When we filmed the original Maps Aesthetic, we did it at that gym that used to work out back in the day, and they had so much old equipment. Mm. They had equipment that was run on chains. It wasn't even cables. Uh, they had like the bicycle chain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, bicycle chain equipment. The reason why I know why they took it out because people get their fingers caught in them and then get their fingers cut off. But they were the smoothest machines you could use, way better than cables because it was all on a track or whatever. But they had the one where you stand up tall, you grab the handles, and it's a machine with a long arm. You do laterals. Oh, yeah. You do shoulder laterals. Yeah. What a great pump you would get on that one. I like the assisted pull-up when I'm feeling lazy. 
Shut <laughs> up. When you, you know do your I mean? glute, when you do your glute pumps? Yeah. yeah. Dude, this is my leg. You don't use the Gravitron, do you? <laughs> dude, I do sometimes. Dude, <laughs> I do, do pull-ups. Like, so you I'm just do, like, So ah, you can do at least five? At least I get, yeah, exactly, dude. I feel heavy today, you he know needs, what I'm saying? He needs a glute assistance. Yeah, I need, need a little <laughs> assist. Lift, lift these cakes up yeah, for me. Yeah, a little, little person down there. <laughs> Next question is from Mini Fig. What do you do when you have the right mindset to achieve your goals, but you have too many distractions keeping you from reaching them? All right, let's let's. Uh, fix. Butt picks do this to me all the time. <laughs> <Man>. Totally understand. <laughs> so this. Distracted. Totally understand this question. True story. Like right when you're reading a, an article, you know, <laughs> yeah. science, and then see yeah. this is how to, I don't know how you do it. Oh not. no. Okay. So yeah. here, so we we got it right away. The way you're asking the question tells me you don't have the right mindset. <laughs> it does because I'm just gonna call you out. <laughs> well, no. I mean, listen. Uh, what do you do when you have the right mindset, but you keep getting distracted? Right. You don't have the You're right not mindset. Focused. No, yeah. you don't have the right mindset. The right mindset doesn't allow you to to be distracted. Now, if you find that you're having an issue with distractibility, change your environment. Mm -hmm. You know, m change things around. I, I know for me, when I'm when I'm writing, for example, and I need to to create content. Now, in the past, anytime I create content, because I used to write, I wrote a lot of blogs before uh, we started Mind Pump as part of the, the original Maps program. But a lot of those were based off of inspiration, and it's not a problem. When I'm inspired, I'll just I'll, I can pump out, you know, two, three thousand words, no problem. the The problem was when I'm scheduled to write something, then I'm like, okay, I have to create some content. If my phone is next to me. I'm, it's going to take me forever. I get mm -hmm. distracted. Oh, got to check Instagram, check Facebook. Oh, I got to text so and so. What I do is I take my phone, I put on my Brain FM, which mm -hmm. is which is uh, wireless or whatever, uh, Bluetooth. Brain FM, by the way, if you don't know what that is, it's this company that produces these sounds that can produce different brain wave states. So like sleep, meditation, and then they have but one they called- made, They actually made it into music, which is the cool part. Yeah, so it's music and it's background sounds, and they have one called Focus, and it legit works. Like you put it on- It's how we're brainwashing and our in, audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you put it on, and in 10 minutes, I'm in the- So in I the put outro. it on my phone, but yeah. I move my phone away from Buy me. maps. Yeah, I, I put my phone <laughs> on the table away from yeah. me, and then it works. So you have to change, kind of change your environment. I, you know, yeah. I have something for you. Like, so- um, <laughs> Adderall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually, could be right. It could be no. Uh, so sometimes we we set like these like uh, we have the right. She maybe she has the right mindset because she really wants this goal. She she starts off really focused, and then eventually what happens? Maybe the distraction is like a day she falls off, or you know I saw that she has a kid, and maybe the kid gets sick, or you have something that hits you like that, right? So and totally understandable. So something that I've I've done with myself for a really long time. Uh, it's how I started to really get into the, like to, in order to compete at the level that I competed, there was no, I didn't have an option, right? Like I had to have the right mindset to be able to compete with the 1%. So, and You're I down to the gram yes, with your diet, right? And, yeah. and no missing workouts, no nothing tracking volume, all that. And so before I even like announced that I was going to compete, I was training for a year to even check myself would i have the mindset for this like am i you know am i just going to say i want to compete and then when it really comes down to like the the, the discipline that's going to take am i really going to follow through so before i even announced it on instagram or told the audience or told anybody i was doing going to do something like this i was already like training as if i was going to and what i had found would happen just like at anything else in my in my career i'd be going along and then something would happen. It wouldn't be like a distraction that was like distracting me in my workout as much as it was a distraction in my life that would make me fall off a day or whatever. And so I do this thing where I compete with myself where, and this is where you have to decide what, what, what a good first goal is for yourself. So for me, it would be like, okay, I'm going to be perfect on my diet for the next two weeks and I'm not going to miss a single workout and I already have them scheduled out what I'm going to lift. So if like if you're following one of our programs and you know what you need to be eating and I'm tracking on my, my food tracker, so that's my first goal. Now, of course, when I hit that two weeks, I don't go celebrate and fall off. I, keep, I try and stretch it as long as I can, but I set a goal of something that maybe I haven't achieved yet. Like maybe lately I've stringed five days or seven days. I haven't been able to stretch beyond that. So I set a goal that's going to stretch me a little bit from what I've done before and I get to, the, and then I try and build on that. And so let's say I get past that, the two week mark and then uh, day 19, I was consistent per, and then day 19 distraction happens, uh, just a terrible day. Either the diet didn't come through or I missed a workout. What I do is I just go, okay, I, I just don't beat myself up over it. I go, okay, I made 19 days. Guess what the next goal is? 20 days. 
Can I now the next goal in my head is 20 days? Can I give 20 days of this consistency? And I just keep playing that game until it eventually builds on months where I'm, I'm starting to say like, mm -hmm. okay, I've strung months and months and months uh, together, and that is has always helped me build momentum and consistency is not beating myself up over the the setbacks that are inevitable to happen with most people, mm -hmm. but always challenging myself to stretch myself a little bit further each time. Then before you know it, you've created a habit. I do a very similar thing to that. Uh, but also in terms of like the environment that, you know, I, I need to be able to like maintain this, this level of focus. I mean, that for me is, is essential. And so whatever I have to do, if I have a very specific goal, like, and for me, it's usually, uh, my office and, and I'll go in downstairs and I'm basically, I'll, I'll turn on brain FM as well. Like that's something that just helps me because my mind is so distractible already to, you know, think about all these other things coming up. And, uh, plus to having it on my phone, it, it helps me to kind of put my phone away yeah, and then I can have that music playing, um, you know, over the speaker or in through my, my, my earphones. Um, but just, just for me to like kind of create that, 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 that space and environment, it, it gets everything working in that direction so much more effectively. But, uh, you know, on, on a day to day basis, like this is something too, where I, I have a list, I have a list of priorities, um, when I'm really focused and dialed in on like, this is a goal I need to achieve. Like I, I am notching off a list. I physically write it with a pencil on a pad and it's like old school, but, uh, it, it looks to me like what's the most achievable and like, and so I'll write that at the top and then like the ones that are going to take a little bit more time towards the bottom. And I just etch away at that. And, and it's something that I've, I try to be as consistent as that, but it's only for something like I'm, I know I need like massive focus on. Yeah. I think creating the environment and scheduling the time is, the, is the big one, right? Like schedule the time block, create an environment that is uh, immovable time. Yeah. That, it, it, and you know what? Sometimes that means you're in that time space and you can't think of, okay. So you just sit there and that's okay. This is the time I'm supposed to do what I'm supposed to do. And maybe not as great as I want it to be, but I'm going to block off this time and sit here and, and try and at least try because this is a skill that you build over time. Just like any skill you practice it and practice makes you better at it. Yeah. And you need to practice not being distracted. Set up your environment. Set up your your situation. Block off some time, and little by little, you'll find that each time you do this, your focus is better and better and better. It's also important to evaluate your priorities too. I mean, some people say this a lot to me that oh, they're so serious about a goal, and it's like every holiday, every birthday, everything you know, cousins, yeah. basketball, everything that comes up, like they don't want to miss because that is a more of a and not to, which is fine exactly yeah. not to judge anybody who does that like family is very important there's a lot of things that are really important like you have to be honest with yourself and what your priorities are and i'll tell you getting in competitive shape is very selfish and i remember d during that time i was constantly apologizing for yeah. that like because there was many things that i i opted not to do because i knew it was going to get in the way of this goal that was really important to me so People say like, oh, this I have the right mindset or this goal is so important to me, but then they let the, the most basic things distract them or get in their way. It's like, right. well, it's really not that important to you, though. You, these other things are actually really important to you because every time one of these other things come up, you you tend to it's, let that become yeah, the priority. Factoring that in is a lot of times what determines uh, your success with I, that. I think it's tough because people don't like to admit uh, that their priorities are different than what they would like to project. Um, you need to be okay with what your real priorities are and your actions actually tell you yeah. what your priorities are. Your words and your feelings, you know, they can give you hints, but at the end of the day, you know, if you're somebody that really, for example, if you really, really value animal rights, uh, I, you can tell me all day long, but I can tell by your actions. Your actions will tell me if that's what you really believe in. You know, you could say that you're hardcore, business person, entrepreneur, and you'll do anything to grow your business, but I can tell by your actions. If, and that's okay. You can be, it, it, you don't have to be all these other things. You can be just what you are. Yeah. Sometimes making that admission to yourself and be like, you know, this is actually my priority actually loosens you up a little bit and actually results in better focus. 100%. Yeah. My fitness and my physique right now is a reflection of the priority of my fitness as it, as it, on a, its priority list right now. Uh, the business is far more uh, of a priority right now. Max is far more a priority to me right now. I've got other stuff going on in my family, more of a priority for right now. 
And me, like, so I look like to the average person, somebody who works out or is healthy, but I'm by no means impressive right now. Like, but I'm okay with that. Like, it's not a priority right now. I'm taking care of myself. I'm staying on my mobility. I'm training. I, I pay attention to not over consume and over indulge. Your my. fitness is serving your other priorities yes. rather than your other things serving fitness. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and there's, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with knowing that I'm not the most impressive fitness guy on Instagram right now. I, I don't need to prove that to anybody and it's not a priority right now. So I think a lot of times it's just checking in with yourself. And, and really gut checking saying, is this as much of a priority and, and a goal and a mindset that I think I really want? And, you know, maybe you're fooling yourself. Everybody wants their cake and eat it too. You want to, be, yeah, I want to look like the cover of Men's Health, but then I also want to work on my, my, my business and grow and scale this massive company at the same time, be there all the time for my son. Like, fuck, something's got to give. Yeah. And in this case, what's going to give for me is my commitment to the gym five to seven days a week is not as much of a priority to me. I, I can turn that up when Whenever I feel like it. Yeah, yeah. You got it. You, 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 if you practice not being distracted, you'll get better at it also. Distractions, getting distracted is, uh, and learning to not be distracted is a skill. And it's just like meditation. When people meditate, part of what, what meditation involves is learning how to keep the brain from getting distracted. You ask, if you've ever tried meditating, you know how frustrating it is when you've only done it for, you know, six months. Uh, but then you talk to somebody who's been doing it for three or four years. And you find that they're far better at it. They didn't start off that way. Mm -hmm. It took them practice. So be easy on yourself and, again, be honest with yourself. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides. They're all absolutely free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.